go over five ways to naturally and effectively boost your immune system. Obviously within the past year, people have been more concerned about their health, especially about fighting off pathogens and viruses like COVID-19. So what have most people have done and what governments have done is put strict regulations on the spread of these germs. So face masks, hand sanitizers everywhere social distancing and so forth. Now for you as an individual, those are band-aids. The best thing you could possibly do to fight off viruses, pathogens, to have a more energetic, healthy life is to simply boost your immune system. Boosting your immune system is the best way to stay healthy and in this video we're going to go over five proven ways to do just that. First, let's start off by talking about what the immune system is. The immune system refers to the cells, proteins, tissues, and organs in your body that fight against anything harmful that could cause disease or injury. There are a few different cells of the immune system. You've probably heard of lymphocytes or white blood cells. B lymphocytes are like the CIA of the body. They detect harmful substances and send out antibodies to tag the bacterial invaders for death. T lymphocytes or killer T cells are like the Terminator or a Navy SEAL or a, an assassin. They hunt out pathogens and kill them. There are many other immune cells like phagocytes that essentially eat pathogens you get the idea. The immune cells can't function unless you provide the immune system with the proper fuel and recovery. So how do we give the body what it needs so the immune system can do its job? Whether there's a pandemic or you just want to be the best leader you can for your family, your career, and your life, and you want to have energy and, and avoid getting sick. Number one, proper exercise. According to Warburton and Breton, exercise clearly lowers the risk of the most prevalent and harmful diseases that plaguing men like heart disease and diabetes. But it's not just those types of diseases. Exercise directly builds your immune system to fight contagions. Check out this research by Neiman and Wentz. Exercise has been shown to fight chronic inflammation that leads to, to disease over time. And those who don't exercise are significantly more likely to be infected by contagious bacterial infections. After that, you're probably thinking the more exercise, the better. Well, it's not entirely true. When studying marathon runners, scientists found that those training 97 kilometers a week versus 32 kilometers a week were twice as likely to experience an infectious episode. When you look at athletes who overtrain, meaning they perform too much work without proper recovery, their testosterone to cortisol ratio significantly decreases, basically leading them to worse male hormone profiles for muscle strength, energy, mood, and of course, immunity. If you're an average guy, this doesn't apply to you. Overtraining doesn't apply to you. So the studies looked at runners running 97 or more kilometers a week and not getting enough recovery. Average guys, if we're working out for an hour a day, that tends to be a lot. For myself, and this is what I would recommend, I'd lift weights four to six days a week. I currently do it five days a week and then I do boxing on the two other days. So I'm getting my weight training in, plus I'm getting cardio in twice a day or twice a week. On top of that, I do the air bike two or three times a week as well. So I am doubling up on most weighted days with the air bike. Air bike is a very intense, very difficult piece of exercise equipment that I have in the other room. It's a great piece of exercise equipment to work out with, love it. But regardless, I would not worry about the overtraining aspect. I would worry about making training a habitual thing meaning you do it every day in some capacity, whether that's cardio, whether that's interval training, a sport like boxing, do some physical activity every day because that's how humans are supposed to live. We're not supposed to be sedentary. Number two is sleep. And this is where your most of your recovery will come in. Doctors do not tell you seven to nine hours of sleep for no good reason. It's important for energy, mood, muscle, and strength, cognitive function, testosterone, and a lot more. So many people immediately see improving your immunity through vaccines and supplements, but something as simple as eight hours of high quality sleep per night can literally change your life. Scientists from the University of California designed a study in which they intentionally gave their participants rhinovirus, which is known to cause the common flu. They also recorded their sleep habits. Those who slept five hours a night had the highest risk of catching the cold. 
Sleeping at least six to seven hours showed no increased risk of developing a cold. There was a trend for those who slept over seven hours to have even less risk. Considering this info, plus the tried and true recommendation of sleeping seven to nine hours a night, most men should at least sleep seven hours a night if they want a healthy immune system and hormones. You know sleep is important. Let me give the answer to the question you probably have. What if I can't get into seven to nine hours of sleep? You have time to prioritize whatever you want to prioritize. If you really care about your sleep immunity as well as testosterone energy and all the other benefits you get from sleep, including better work, then you can manage your schedule to ensure you're hitting those sleep targets. But I get that we all have unique circumstances. So here are scientifically proven ways to maximize your hours of sleep and the quality of your sleep. A study published in the Journal of Sleep Research su suggested that people who have irregular sleep schedules alter their circadian rhythm and an important sleep hormone called melatonin. So if you want consistently high quality sleep, keep a strict sleep schedule. Next, it's important you improve your sleep environment. Simple things such as sleeping in a room set at a cool temperature and in a pitch black room improve sleep quality. This should go without saying, but sporadic noises, from traffic or noisy neighbors can significantly impact your sleep quality in a negative way. In this case, it doesn't hurt to wear earplugs. I also recommend you increase your bright light exposure during the day and minimize blue light during the night. In other words, cut off late night social media or Netflix for at least two hours before you go to bed. Lastly, stimulants like coffee, caffeine, uh, nicotine. Unfortunately, you have to be careful of how much you consume and when you consume it. A study published in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine compared the effects of caffeine consumed right before sleep, three hours before sleep, and six hours before sleep. Even consuming caffeine six hours before bed affects sleep quality. So my recommendation is to have caffeine outside of six hours before you go to bed. Number three is manage stress. I'm sure you heard that stress can hurt your immune system. So how true is this? And how can you manage your stress levels? Some stress and cortisol is normal. But when you have chronic high stress, your cortisol is sky high on a consistent basis. If you didn't know, it's a simple fact that cortisol and testosterone are inversely related. When your cortisol is high, your testosterone will decrease. So that's clearly a problem for your health, energy, physique, and manhood. But since we're talking about immunity, let's discuss how chronically high cortisol levels affects it. This hormone leads to systemic inflammation that is constantly elevated. This process gradually decreases your lymphocytes, those crucial white blood cells that fight foreign invaders in your body. So stress is basically mowing down the army of soldiers protecting your castle. And if you don't do something to change this, your castle, AKA your body and health, will be subjected to any bacteria or virus you're exposed to. In terms of reducing stress, there are a few things that come to mind, but the biggest is realizing that stress, at least mental stress, is just that. In Meditations, the last great Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius says, Man is not worried by real problems so much as by imagined anxieties about real problems. Our stress, anxiety, and mental suffering is caused by how we think. If we perceive problems, whether they are in the present or imagined in the future, you'll be playing the victim. What the legendary leaders like Marcus Aurelius, Abe Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt have in common is that they focused on the present moment and what was in their control. Not the defeats of the past, imaginary catastrophes of the future, and definitely not things outside of their realm of control. This gives you the power over your own life while allowing you to accept what is not in your control. In fact, we have substantial research like, like this 2010 paper by Troy and colleagues showing that consciously looking at situations differently that seem stressful at a first glance reduces stress and depressive symptoms. So keep your stress low. If you do so, not only will you have higher testosterone and lower cortisol, your immune system will be a lot stronger as well. Number four is limit alcohol intake. You may have heard me tell you to limit your alcohol intake in the past. For example, beer is the most estrogenic alcohol. But of course, you'd have to abuse it for it to really harm you, and that's including your immunity. 
Studies actually show moderate alcohol consumption may be a good idea. Sirksma and colleagues found that consuming alcohol with dinner seemed to have a protective benefit on cardiovascular health. The problems really arise when you're talking about drinking a serious amount. Research published in the European Respiratory Journal found that the more people drank, the more likely they were to land in the hospital with pneumonia. Be real, most guys want to enjoy a drink every now and then. So when you drink, which forms of alcohol are best to have? I already said that beer is very estrogenic, so drink beer in, in moderation. My favorites include whiskey and red wine. Wine is specifically beneficial because it contains ingredients like resveratrol, which has been shown to reduce estrogen, increase testosterone, and improve your metabolic health. My recommendation is to enjoy a drink or two every now and then. Just remember chronic binge drinking is not going to help your immune system or your ambitions in life. The fifth is very important because it's something you have complete control over and that is having a balanced diet. When you get all the micronutrients you need, you're supporting your immune system keep, to keep you healthy. Unfortunately, most people simply don't get the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients they need for an optimal immune system. So let me just cover a few of the most important micronutrients you need for a healthy immune system. First is vitamin C. This is the obvious one, so let's cover it first. B and C vitamins are water soluble, so you lose them through your pee and sweat. You can't just store them for later use. That's why your diet should include citrus fruit, fruits like oranges, grapefruit, strawberries, lemons, and limes. Number two is vitamin B6. Here's another water soluble vitamin you need to consistently replenish. Some of the best sources of vitamin B6 are chicken, salmon, and sweet potatoes. Next is vitamin E. Vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant that re reduces inflammation and fights off infections. You can get it from nuts, seeds, and spinach. Finally is spirulina. This is a rare one that most people don't get in their diet, but uh, besides being the obvious micronutrients, there are specific foods that provide a ton of benefit to your health immunity. One of them is spirulina. Spirulina is a powerful blue-green algae. It's considered one of nature's most complete sources of important and vital nutrients. It actually contains vitamins C, B, and E, as well as minerals like calcium, zinc, and magnesium. It contains specific antioxidants that protect our cells and tissues from free radical damage. You can try your best to get all the foods and micronutrients you need, but it can be a challenge getting the right amounts of every single ingredient. I include everything you need to give you a bulletproof immune system in man greens. Man greens contains full clinically effective doses of naturally grown superfoods, adaptogens, and anabolic agents that boost testosterone, lower stress, improve sleep, and increase overall health. Other greens on the market include flax, soy, alfalfa, green tea, and mint, or other estrogenic ingredients like these that lower testosterone in men or they use sneaky proprietary blends to conceal how much of an ingredient they use to shortchange you by making you pay more for inadequate amounts of ingredients that are supposed to get you results. To put it simply, Mangreens is the only supplement on the market designed to specifically give men an impenetrable fortress of an immune system without destroying your testosterone, raising estrogen, or hiding important facts about proprietary blends that they use. You can pick up mangreens in the description down below. I take this every day at around 11 to give me an energy boost, but also to keep me healthy and energetic and anabolic. With that, all of the studies will be placed in the description down below. Please look at those studies and look at the article down below if you want more information. I'll talk to you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and by all means post a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Take care.